we will start a study of regression by studying the basic concepts behind a regression analysis in this module we will cover what is regression the population regression line what does the error term in the population regression line represent how do we estimate the population regression line that is the sample regression line and finally what do we mean by linear regression and are there other types of regression also to start with what is regression it is the study of relationship between an explained or dependent variable and one or more independent or explanatory variables for example you might come across cases in which you might think that a particular variable is dependent or is a function of other variables for example you do know that consumption is an increasing function of income of an individual hence to study the relationship between such variables is called regression however regression is only a mathematical tool it does not in any way imply causation you might sometimes come across completely spurious regressions for example a regression between rainfall on earth and the number of volcanic eruptions in mars there is absolutely no causal link between these two events hence every regression must be backed by economic theory a regression which is not backed by economic theory can very well be one that is just a coincidence thirdly regression is a conditional mean that is it gives us the mean value of y for a particular value of x if x which is the independent variable or the explanatory variable takes a large number of values and if y is functionally dependent on x then for every value of x you would expect the mean of y to be different for example if they are positively correlated then you would expect that as x increases the expected value of y also increases hence the study of this relationship between the expected value of y conditional on the value of x is known as regression regression might be conducted for the following reasons firstly as we just discussed to find the conditional mean of y given x a very common use of regression is to find out whether there exists any relationship between x and y we might not be interested in the exact magnitude of the relationship but are interested in the direction of the relationship between x and y that is whether they are positively related or negatively related thirdly if we want to predict the value of y for a given value of x then our best bet for that value of y is the expected value of y for that given x and hence regression analysis is useful in this context now we with this basic context start the study of regression analysis suppose we are given for different x's we are given different y values for example x1 takes six different values of y these could for example x is could represent the family income and y could represent the consumption expenditure of that family so for the six families who have a family income of x1 we have six different levels of consumption expenditure and similarly for other levels of income x2 x3 x4 and x5 what the population regression line would be is that we take the mean values of all these consumption expenditures so for example now they are represented by these red dots at x1 we can see that the mean consumption expenditure is equal to y1 for x2 the mean consumption expenditure is equal to y2 and so on now the line connecting these dots is known as the population regression line as you can see it need not always be a straight line it could be a curved line as it is shown in this case so this line which connects the mean value of y for each of those values of x is known as the population regression line so now suppose that you want to write down the population regression line as a mathematical function then the population regression line's expression as a mathematical function is known as the population regression function or the prf the prf expresses expectation of y given x as a function of alpha which is the intercept term 
plus a certain function of x1 and x2 which in this case we have represented as beta 1 to the power epsilon into x1 to the power gamma plus beta 2 to the power theta into x2 to the power delta. The exact functional form will depend on what kind of a line that you are trying to construct. So for example if you are trying to construct a straight line then gamma and delta will most probably be equal to 1. However, the thing to note here is that every value of y1 for a given x1 does not lie on the population regression line. For example, x1 has 6 different values of y1 and yet none of those 6 lie on the population regression line because the PRL only connects the expected values. Hence, between every value of y at an x1 and the mean of that value of y at that x1, there is a non-systematic or random component known as ui. Hence, to make our population regression function more robust, we must include this ui. So, y star is equal to expected value of y plus ui. In our case, when we consider this blue dot, ui is negative because y star is less than the expected value of y at x1. Hence, any population regression function consists of two parts. The first is a systematic or deterministic component which only gives us the expected value of y at that x1 and the second is a non-systematic or random component which gives us the difference between that expected value of y and the real y. However, the question now arises that why is there such a non-systematic or random component? The answer to that is that firstly there is some intrinsic randomness in the variable. For example, if you take two students who have both the same IQ level and the same level of preparation and make them write a test, it is extremely likely that they will not have the same score which reflects the intrinsic randomness while you take an exam. The second reason is the effect of variables not included in the model. For example, consumption expenditure of a family might not only be dependent on the income of the family but also say their socio-economic status. So for example, some communities tend to spend lesser than other communities at the same level of income. Hence this will be the effect of variables that are not included in the model. Thirdly, there might be errors of measurement. The errors of measurement will cause different values of y to be different even for the same level of x. These errors of measurement, however, will be much larger if we talk about only a sample. So, For example, if we are talking about the relationship between consumption and income in a community and we have access only to a few families in that community, that is, from the larger population, we are taking out a sample and hence carrying out our analysis, in which case these errors of measurement are likely to be larger. For example, return to our previous example of x1 to x5 and a dependent variable which is y. Suppose for every x1, instead of the earlier 6 or 7 samples, we are given only one sample. And then what we do is try to fit a line which goes through all these points or at least is as close to all these points as possible. This line is known as the sample regression line. However, you might argue that this, if you take a different sample, then this sample regression line is likely to take a different shape and which is true. The repeated sampling of the same population will generate different sample regression lines. However, on an average we can say that the sample regression line will tend towards the population regression line. Now, just like a population regression line has a population regression function, similarly a sample regression line also has a sample regression function. In this case, instead of saying expected value of y, we say y hat or the predicted value of y is a function of alpha which is the intercept term plus a certain function of x1 and x2. However, as you can very easily observe, no matter how well we try to fix this line, there will always be a gap between the actual y and the predicted value of y. In this case, it is known as ei or the error term. So y is actually a function of y hat which is the predicted value of y plus ei which is the error term. In our case, the error term here is negative. So ei represents the error due to sampling. 
if we take a different sample the EIs will again be different. EIs will also typically be a function of the functional form of this sample regression line that we choose. For example if we choose a straight line then the EIs will be larger than if we choose a quadratic or another higher order polynomial form. Now we come to the last question of what is linear regression. So we had said that our population regression function is yi equal to alpha plus beta 1 epsilon into x1 to the power of gamma plus beta 2 to the power of theta into x2 to the power of delta plus ui. Linearity can mean two things. Firstly linear in variables and that is when gamma and delta will be equal to 1 and hence our population regression function becomes yi equal to alpha plus beta 1 epsilon into x1 plus beta 2 theta into x2 plus ui. Linearity might also mean linear in parameters that is the powers of beta 1, beta 2, alpha and all other coefficients is equal to 1. Typically when we talk about linearity we are talking about a linear in parameters model because some assumptions of models being linear in parameters lead us to certain results which are useful and hence further in this series whenever we will say linear regression we will be talking about linear in parameters regressions. There can also obviously be other forms. There can be quadratic, logarithmic and other forms of regressions which we will not cover in this module. This brings us to the end of our module on regression analysis. This will now be followed up with modules first on two variable regression, on hypothesis testing, on multivariate regression, on functional forms, on dummy variables and on violations of the classical linear regression model which we will encounter in the later modules.